What sin does, what addiction does, is to tie down a man for the life he should live and the exploit he should perform to be happening before his eyes, but it's not the vessel doing it. What is most, most noteworthy about vessels of impact is not the impact, it's the liberty of the spirit to make that possible. There are many people who are watching what they could have become happen before their life and seen others do it. And each time they struggle to get it done, to do some things, the weight draws them back. The addiction draws them back. It pulls them back to the ocean and says, it's not you. And some, the devil has been able to automate a system where it happens every day. So what that means is that if, care is not, if it happens every day, you may not even have a fasting life because it happens every day. And you can't be fasting and sinning. Masturbation every day. Pornography every day. Um, smoking every day. And different forms of vices. Now the devil has automated it. Now it's his daily. Not just daily. Almost every hour. So what he's doing is that he has been able to successfully automate a process that now because addiction is the devil saying it is not that thing coming for you it is you hooked on it and as long as you are hooked on it what is happening is that the time you could have spent to fellowship to study to go deeper in god to be proficient in becoming this vessel that god will use that time is invested into this and what that means is that there's no way god can use a man who is handicapped the man who didn't prepare addiction takes you away from preparation take you away from everything that you should do When you see such a person, is there still hope? Yes. Listen. The battle cry of the devil is to get you far away from Jesus as much as possible. To let you, he wants to make you know that you are too dirty for fellowship. He wants to make you know that you are too filthy to call Abba. He wants to make you believe that it is insane for you to believe that your kind can do anything important with the time you have wasted. He wants to make you believe that it's over. He wants to communicate your nakedness to you. So you can also hide and cover yourself with figs. And when God came and searched for Adam and Eve, that was a father coming to look for his children that has gone astray. Go and read your Bible. In Genesis 3, he killed an animal and he made coats for them with the skin. The first fashion designer in the Bible was God. And the first thing God did to them was to clothe them. He clothed them before he began to ask questions. Listen, no addiction can survive the presence. You are in it because you believe that you should be far. You are in it because you are going farther from him. You are in it because you have allowed it to break your fellowship. I said, no matter what it is, keep reaching out. Nobody drowns in water when they keep reaching out. Those who will rescue them will come. But meanwhile, in this case, it is Jesus who is doing the rescue. People ask, what's this? this, this? I say, see. Somebody say, go and discipline yourself. If discipline was the way out, you would have been free for long. Your head is too small to comprehend the mystery of iniquity. It's been woven before you were born. And now you have gotten yourself in it. You are now neck deep. And the question you are asking is, will a day ever I come and I'll be free? Can I ever do two weeks on earth and not be addicted? Yes. What is the way out? Very, very simple. Let me show you a scripture. Are you following me now? Are you sure? 
Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Romans, chapter number 6. I've been fighting tears since I began to preach. <laughs> Romans, chapter number 6. Let's start reading from verse 1 for the sake of contextual understanding. Romans 6 from verse 1. What then shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? No. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by the baptism into his death, that like as Christ we are raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we shall walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection be, sorry, in likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that from now onward we should not serve sin. That's a consciousness. That you may have the habit, but you must not lose sight of the fact that the old man has been crucified. So are you saying that the new man is capable of sinning? Yes. But he does not have the nature of sin. He is sinning, but he is not a sinner. Now, when we say this, say, hey, this sin, it's Bible. The nature of sin is what makes a person a sinner. The new man does not have that nature. When you got born again, it's called new birth. Because your corrupted nature was taken and you were given the nature of Christ. But beyond that nature, you have a soul. You have a soul. It, comp it comprises of your mind, your thinking system. If, what, if the journey you have taken that soul to before you became a new man is the journey of smoking, that soul will still carry the desire. And that's why a new birth is not the end, it's the beginning. Just like a child is born. As newborn babe, we now desire the sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby. So what now happens? You now begin to receive. Give me that scripture, James 1 verse 21. James 1 verse 21. You now begin to receive with meekness the engrafted word. Alright? Look at it, James 1 21. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive what? With meekness, the engrafted word of God, which is able to save your soul. John 15 from verse 3. John 15 verse 3. Look at what the Bible says. John 15 verse 3. Quickly. John 15 3. Look at what the Bible says. I want you to see that. Now look at it. Can we read this together? One, two, three, go. It said, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Meaning that the word carries in itself the ability to wash you clean. So what is now being taken off now? It is the memory, the lust, the corruption that is still trapped in the soul. Transformation began to happen through the word. Look at what um, Paul said to the Romans. Romans 12 from verse 1 to 3. Quickly. Romans 12 from verse 1 to 3. Romans chapter number 12. Say, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It is reasonable service because it is only reasonable to give yourself to the one who has bought you with a price. Okay? It's reasonable. All right, verse 2 now. It said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed. So the transformation doesn't happen because you are not conformed, no. The transformation happens because you are now transformed by the renewing of your mind. What is doing the work of renewing of the mind? That's the word. It said that you may be able to prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Verse 3 now. For I said unto you that this grace... Okay, let me just stop there. Are you seeing that now? The word... You are going deeper because you are not taking in life. You have stopped reading your Bible because you feel that you are too dirty to read it. You have stopped praying because you feel you are too dirty to pray. You have stopped fasting because you feel it's of no use. If you fall, you get up again and get back in the race. You don't lie down there and say, I'm finished. Look at my life. There's nothing of me. I'm finished. I've done it again. 
I've messed up again. Get up! And some of you don't just have to get up. You have to get back in the line because you are men of war.